When did, okay, here's a r very rough and crude um, question. When did your GPS of your career sort of settle into the great classical direction? Because there you are seeing the farm show. There you are coming in and seeing this higgledy piggledy, your first, you know, the Mac Paps and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, George Luscombe and, you know, my whatever, first show was at Blythe. <coughs> I mean, uh, when I was in theater school, Robin Phillips offered me a job here at the Stratford Festival, but I wanted to graduate, so I declined. I didn't know at that time that you could actually leave and still graduate because I think Martha Henry did not finish her last year. She came to Stratford, right? I didn't know you could do that. I didn't even ask. I just said, no, I want to graduate from something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I didn't come. And it was a full company membership. It was not an apprenticeship. He had come down, down and seen a show. I think we did Ladies in Retirement or something. Um, at, this, at, at school, <laughs> you know, some, something, I don't know. Um, and uh, instead... Oh, a there's a creaky, ladies in retirement, oh, yes, a creaky, creaky murder Oh, yes, creaky old mid. melodrama. Yes. Hot Chandra directed, Diana Blanc was in. And, um, and so I, I declined. Instead, my first job was at the Blythe Festival, and I found myself doing collective creations, just like I had seen at the farm show and under the grey rack. And then I thought... Uh, I was two seasons at Blythe, and then I did new plays at 25th Street House and uh, The Globe, and uh, it was new plays. I, I don't think, I did so many accents that first year, I don't know if I ever used my own. I was, a, you know, I was a Ukrainian immigrant, I was a Dutch immigrant, German immigrant, I was Dolores Ebaruri, uh, then I did Spoke Song, it was, you know, Northern Irish. So. I, it was a real mixed bag. And did you think that was going to be your career then? I, I never thought about a career. I sort of thought about what interests me right now. I, I sort of see a career as something I've looked back on as an accumulation, but I never had a career path. All I do know about that is that if I walked into a theater, I'd go, I'd like to work here. I felt that at Blythe when I did a puppet show through there with no, it was the second puppet troupe I worked with. Um, I did a, um, uh, you know, in the 70s was the day of OFY grants, Ontario for Youth grants, and LIP grants. And the f one year, uh, I did one with Jimmy Rankin and Mary Haney, and we did a puppet troupe, and we toured around Toronto areas. And then the next year, after my first year of theatre school, I did another troupe uh, with, uh, um, it was with Hydro because it was about... Uh, conservation of electricity and water. That's right, it was a conservation. We called it the wiser of off, and it was a takeoff on the Wizard of Oz about, you know, off, off, you know, turn off your lights and everything. For Ontario Hydro. I think it was with Ontario Hydro, now that I think <laughs> about it. Isn't that funny? When it was still a public, yeah. And entity. did you play an electron? I played Dorothy, who was going through, through the, the land of the wicked waste of the West. <laughs> Played by Lily Sandell. So, anyways, we went to Blythe, and we did an afternoon show in the basement of the hall, Memorial Hall. And uh, because I think that was the first time I'd been there, because the first time I went to Blythe was actually when I went to visit Kate Trotter, who was doing her her season there, and I was in school. And it was only a year or two old then, Blythe. So I knew I wanted to work in that theater. And I've got when, a sense about it. When you came out, not to belabor the GPS question too much, but when you came out, there was all this um, frenetic creative activity, you know, Blythe, yeah. Uh, yeah. the 25th Street Playhouse, uh, Pass Marai, uh, Toronto Shirt Workshop Productions, and there is Shaw Festival, Stratford Festival, sort of, and then, then there's the commercial, the Mervish, the Alex, whatever, and the three kind of pillars. Mm -hmm. Did you sense the big festivals as being an idea for you, or was it just one job at a time? Oh, I knew as a kid, when I first came to the festival over there uh, in grade nine to see my first Shakespeare play, when I sat there in that space and after the trumpets had gone and I'd heard the cannon go and the bell, and I found myself, I think it might have been the Merchant of Venice, having, I think, probably my first cathartic experience when Antonio was standing alone on stage. It might have been the Ochitri, although it might have been after he was killed. 
in an accident that summer. Uh, I, I remember being so moved by that. I just, and to me, it was, it was history coming alive. Not only was I involved in the story, but I was seeing something that people had seen 400 years before, and I felt this extraordinary, like I was fascinated by museums as well, not because they were old, but because I felt that human beings were not that different, and how extraordinary that we all felt that so long ago, and we're still grappling with these issues and these feelings and these passions. So I remember going, oh, this is a wonderful theater. So I had that feeling again, that one day, maybe, but it wasn't like I have to be there, I have to work there. I didn't feel that. I just said this would be a wonderful place to be.